from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and welcome to a special Cube conversation here in our Boston area studio. Uh, the one constant that we know for customers is change and how they manage the, their data, their applications in this ever-changing world is something that is always interesting to dig into and helping me with this conversation. First time guest on the program, Joe D'Angelo, who is a distinguished engineer and national practice lead of availability solutions with Veritas is here with me. Joe, thanks so much for joining us. Stu, thanks for having me here, this is great. All right. So. Uh, First, before we get into it, give us a little bit about you know, your background, what you work on, uh, how long you've been with Veritas. Sure, so I've been with Veritas for nine years um, in various different roles. I was a product manager when I joined the company. Uh, since then, I've joined uh, the field sales technical, or technical field sales organization, uh, working as an advocate with some of our more strategic customers, um, sort of like a liaison back to the product team. Uh, before that, I was a consultant, uh, sort of as a, uh, you know, implementing these technologies from Veritas. And of course, I was a customer too, so I always had sort of that round out that full, uh, full spectrum of ex experience with the company. Oh, love that we can draw on some of your experience as a customer. Sure. Let, let, let's start there, if we will. Uh, you work with a lot of customers on, in the space you're working on, the availability solutions. Mm -hmm. I kind of teed it up with, we know that there's change happening. Uh, you know, when I talk about customers and their cloud journey, mm -hmm. uh, it is an ever-moving thing. It's not a one-way thing. There's data centers, there's cloud, there's edge, there's all of these environments and, you know, figuring out what application, what application goes where and how that's changing over time is, is a real challenge for customers these days, is it not? It absolutely is, and really one of the sort of the foundational tenets of the availability solutions at Veritas is that we give customers the ability to sort of decouple their applications from all of that sort of chaos that's in, the, in their infrastructure, whether it's in the cloud, whether it's hyper-converged, physical, virtual, different storage technologies. They can run their application where they need to run it, when they need to run it, and be confident to know that it'll be performant. Yeah, well, we know from Veritas' legacy, uh, I remember seeing the billboards and the t-shirts, there's sure. no hardware agenda. So we understand <laughs> uh, Veritas has always been a software Sure. company, uh, when you look at that kind of wave of you know, software-defined storage mm -hmm. and the like, uh, help us understand you know, today, here's 2020, yeah. we're living in the future, yeah. uh, uh, you know, what that means for you know, customers' data, customers' application, uh, what the availability solution uh, and the product lines that you work yeah. with mean. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a terrific question. Uh, well, what it means is you have a myriad of choices you have to decide on. So it's not just the individual application, but really uh, the, the, the composition of those apps and the relationship they have with other different other applications. You mentioned software-defined storage. I mean, we cut our teeth on software-defined storage back when that wasn't even a term, you know, 30 years ago. Right? I like to think that it's almost in our DNA that, you know, taking and virtualizing storage is one of the first things we did as, as, as a technology. Um, today, we've, we've taken that same sort of approach to commoditizing most of the infrastructure so that it doesn't matter what operating system, it doesn't matter what storage vendor you use, doesn't matter what cloud provider you use. Our technology gives you the luxury, or I like to say breathing room in many cases, to make those decisions um, so that they can align with your business outcomes more effectively. All right, so uh, Joe, the, the product we're going to be talking a bit about is InfoScale. InfoScale. Uh, for people that aren't familiar, sure. you know, what is InfoScale? How does it fit in this ever-changing landscape? You mentioned you know cloud and yeah. uh, operating systems and hypervisors and everything. So help us tee up where InfoScale fits. Sure thing. So InfoScale is really a moniker, if nothing else, on top of our uh, storage foundation, Veritas Volume Manager, Veritas File System, Veritas Cluster Server Technologies, and those have been industry staples for decades. Right, being able to address the needs of the most critical applications and some of the most stringent and high demanding workloads, be at the top financial institutions, healthcare providers, etc. The, uh, the technology itself really addresses uh, resiliency and availability from sort of three areas. Uh, we'd like to think that you can provide the uh, ability to keep your services online with our, with our high availability and disaster recovery solutions. But we also want to make sure that those applications and those data sets that you're using the technology with make sure that they're performant. Right? Because an underperforming application is just as detrimental to availability as would be a, uh, an application that's simply gone offline. And we also want to give you the ability to migrate workloads and move those applications among different technologies. So that's really where the, the, the focus of InfoScale is. Okay, well. so, you know, Joe, when you have customers that are trying to figure out, okay, uh, I'm, I'm taking an application, do I take that from my data center, do I move that to the mm -hmm. cloud? If I'm building a new application, where do I do that? 
how does infel scale fit into that discussion, and how is the discussion of info scale fit with the infrastructure discussion that they are having? Yeah, absolutely. So inevitably, what the choice, a lot of the customers I have conversations with struggle with just, what's the first step to get to the cloud? And many of them are locked into a, a proprietary solution or some technology that doesn't really have an analog or some sort of equivalency in the cloud. With InfoScale, what we allow them to do is actually replicate that data anywhere they want to go. Because you said we don't have a hardware agenda, it doesn't matter what the storage underneath the covers may be. So we can go from physical storage on-prem into the public cloud across any variety of different tiers of storage that exist there. And this works at not just the from a data set standpoint, but the applications as well. So if you've got something as critical as a database, a relational database, an Oracle database, a SQL database, whatever it may be, you can very easily replicate those and move those workloads into the public cloud for the purposes of migrations or disaster recovery, with truth be told, the exact same thing. You know, a migration is just a one-way ticket, a, a DR is a round trip ticket. Um, but the technology is exactly the same. So that's how you're able to achieve those goals. Okay. Um, we talk about applications in general. You mentioned some specific. Is there, you know, you know, a compatibility list, or you know, what sorts of classes of applications? How, how do I know if my application today is something that fits under this? Certainly. So we have a catalog of agents that we support, what we call our bundled agent or agent framework, um, and it uh, it's a list of roughly over 500 different infrastructure components, applications, and services that we monitor and protect uh, for the purposes of again for disaster recovery and, and migration capabilities. Um, pretty much all the enterprise applications, the, the, the most uh, uh, prolific workloads that are in the in the industry today, so right, your databases, your middleware tier, application servers, those are all included. Um, but we also have the ability to very easily introduce custom applications. So a customer can take and say they may have written something homegrown and it has any number of different components to it. If you can tell me how to start it, how to stop it, how to monitor it, we can put it in InfoScale. Okay. Uh, Joe, I, I think we paint a pretty good picture of what InfoScale is. Maybe, do you have a customer example that might help us understand a little bit about kind of the use cases yeah. and commonly why they're using it and how that works? Well, I can, I have, I, have a, I have a little bit of an anecdote that I like to tell a story about a customer, uh, a, a state agency that um, was a big InfoScale user, just happened to be on Windows, and um, we'd gotten through a deployment and uh, everything was looking great, and they, they were able to move all of their, uh, their, their applications in this particular, these Windows applications, all uh, in, it being protected by InfoScale, being replicated, and, and having both high availability as well as disaster recovery, and everything was looking great. Um, I finished the project on a Friday afternoon, and by, um, by Sunday morning, I was getting frantic phone calls from the people that I was working with. Um, at, at the time, I was actually a, a consultant, and they're asking me, what, what happened? What's going on? Why, why, what's, what's, what's the issue here? And I go, I left the customer just fine on, on Friday. There were no issues at all. And they said, you, you need to reach out to your team there and, and see what's going on because we're getting some phone calls that there's some problems. I was like, okay. So I, I got on the phone and I spoke to my contact there and he said, oh no, nothing's wrong with the environment, but um, we might have some issues with who's going to be maintaining it come Monday morning. And I go, why? He goes, um, well, I think half the team, well, pretty much all the team is going to be calling in Rich Monday morning. And I go, what are you talking about? He goes, the entire IT staff hit the Mega Millions jackpot. <laughs> so, the, the, this is the entire staff. This was the DBAs, the network admins, the manager, the manager's manager, all had the Mega Millions jackpot. So, needless to say, they weren't too concerned about coming into work on Monday morning, but this poor person that was left, he was left holding the bag. He said, we already reached out to support. Your guys are on the call. We're, we, we, we're, we're confident knowing that, you know, that, that Veritas is going to be there to help us through this transitional period because we've got this consistent layer. So. I use that example because one, it's a fantastic story, but two, it addresses the fact that disasters come in many different flavors and many different, uh, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they can produce and manifest in many different ways. And your people, that to me, that, that's always your most critical asset. And when those suffer, that, that you know, this technology is there really helped to address them all. Well, well Joe, I, I like that example. Rather yeah. than, I think, going forward, rather than saying, well, what happens if one of your critical staff gets hit by a bus? Yeah. What if your they entire support the team, team you know, wins, wins the lottery? lottery? <laughs> and it happens, and it did happen. I'm here to tell you, hand, hand to God, God's on the street. All right, uh, what would you say are some of the kind of misconceptions that maybe people don't understand if they're, they, they haven't looked closely at InfoScape lately? Um, yeah, the, the, Info scale, uh, sorry. great question. Um, so I think some of the misconceptions about it is that um, it's tied to a very specific sort of heritage, big iron, Unix only workloads. Um, admittedly, we cut our teeth in that space, right? Whether it's going back in the days of the original Sun OS and some of the, the big iron systems, um, we, we gained a lot of traction, a lot of, uh, you know, we, we earned our stripes in that space. 
But in reality, that, that space has shrunk tremendously over the last you know, 10 or 15 years for a variety of reasons. And I think there's still some misconception that, that InfoScale or Veritas, you know, Volume Manager and File System, only is relevant in that space. And truth be told, nothing could be further, for, nothing be further from the truth. Uh, because if you go back to what I, my comment I made earlier about this idea of commoditizing that infrastructure, we can help customers transition throughout all those different sort of points of inflection. So of going from the big iron to going to the more commodity, uh, commoditized uh, you know, uh, x86 hardware, going from physical to virtual, going from virtual to the cloud, going from virtual to hyper-converged, and even back in some cases. We have the capabilities and the, 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 uh, the the wherewithal to be able to help customers through those kinds of transitions. Yeah, I, I've been in the industry long enough. I, I remember a lot of those Unix migrations, you know, whether yeah. we're going over to Windows, whether we're going over to Linux. What would you say are some of the similarities and some of the differences from what we did in those environments yeah. uh, compared to uh, what's often a cloud discussion today? Yeah, so truth be told is that we, we, we tend to not reinvent the wheel at Veritas. We, we look and say, okay, what are some of the really you know, tremendously powerful tools and capabilities that we have, how do we apply those to new platforms? You take the cloud, for example. One of the things that we've always prided ourselves on is giving customers, again, that breathing room to make a decision and say, I'm going to move to a new platform. So I can literally take a workload that was running on, on Unix and I can move it over to Linux. Well, that same model now can be applied where I can take that legacy workload running in Solaris, I can move that directly into the public cloud. And that's something that turns a lot of heads. Because I ask a lot of customers, I go, would it be compelling if I had a means for you to be able to take that legacy Solaris environment or that, that, that Unix workload, and I can mine it directly into, say, EC2 on, in AWS, and they're all, they're, it's, it's, they're incredulous. They think, no, this can't happen. There's no way you can do this. And I said, yes, it can, because we look at the cloud as another platform, and we want to be able to have customers take full advantage of it, exploit it, but at the same time, not be fearful that they won't have a way to, to move data in and out of it. You know, how, how is Veritas helping with some of the, the, the management pieces? When you talk about going through any of those migrations, yeah. it's one thing about what platform I live on, but yeah. how do I manage that environment? What skill set do I need? Yeah. How are you working hand in hand with your customers on that? Well, the great thing about it is, is that there is, a, there is a, a sense of parity between what you do on-prem and what you do in the public cloud when you're using InfoScale. Because again, we consume cloud resources just like they were any other platform. So whether you're going from physical to virtual, virtual to hyper-converged, or into the public cloud, the same operations, the same configurations, the same, the same scripts, the same user interface, all the things, all of the, the, the machinery and the tooling that's around those applications can, can, can be consistent. And in many cases, that is, it is uh, invaluable because a lot of customers, while they want to adopt the public cloud, they don't want to have to redefine their operational paradigm. They want to be able to take those workloads and I want to just be able to scoop them up and say, put me in the public cloud, I don't want to change everything around it because I don't have the bandwidth to do that. To take on a whole new re-architecture using the cloud, that's, that's basically starting your, your IT from, from zero and, and building all the way back up. And they don't have the time or the money or the resources to make that happen. So looking for that consistency, looking for that parity between the on-prem and the public cloud. All right, uh, what, what are some of the features that are most resonating with your customers? Um, well, I would say first and foremost, the, 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 the fact that, that our core technology around volume management helps you to virtualize storage, all of the capabilities you have there, the fact that our file system can transition between different, uh, different endians, right? Going from Unix to, to Linux, going from, from Solaris to, to Red Hat and so on, uh, that gives you that flexibility. Our um, hardware um, agnostic replication, the volume replicator, giving you the ability to not only provide DR over any geographic distance, but also the ability to migrate between those platforms. So being able to take and replicate data that's on a, on a Unix system today into the public cloud running Linux. So that's with volume replicator. We also have capabilities that allow you to utilize local storage in the sense that and treat it like it's shared storage. Some of the challenges with the public cloud are around some of the restrictive storage architectures. So you take like a, an availability zone inside of AWS, all that storage is only available inside of that, that particular availability zone. If you want to move an application over to the other node, you can't share storage between those availability zones. With InfoScale, you can. And you can basically uh, address some of those gaps or, 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 or shoot through some of those uh, blind spots. Yeah, how is your team helping your customers keep up with all those changes? You know, when you oh. look at the public cloud, there, there's always new instances, yeah. there's new zones, there's, yeah. it's, it's a constant reinvention happening in the yeah. cloud. Yeah, absolutely. So a couple of things were happening. First and foremost, we, you know, we're in the marketplace, we have CFTs, we've got you know, AMIs for that product so that you can, for InfoScale, 
scale, so you can spin those up much more quickly. Um, working to get in the, the uh, same thing for the Azure marketplace. Uh, we integrate with a lot of the automation and orchestration tools that are in the market today, the Ansibles, the Puppets, the Chefs, making sure that what I call the time to value for our technology is as short as possible, so that you get out of the business of becoming you know, a, a, a Veritas admin, but focusing more on your, on your business and what Veritas can do to help you, you know, improve that. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. A lot of automation going on in this space. Uh, you know, it's a very different world for your customers. Uh, you know, is, is there some that you need to kind of re-educate customers as to, you know, what Veritas is doing today uh, versus what they might have yeah, done a few there, years there, ago? Yeah, there is a, we're, we're not your father's Veritas kind of uh, mentality that we, we try to promote. And I think you, you've seen over the last 12 to 18 months that our, our messaging, our corporate strategy in general has had a, 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 a tremendous sort of resurgence of, of InfoScale being a, a big part of that. Because we recognize that when you, when you talk about Veritas as a whole with our API strategy of availability, protection, and insights, availability of your services and your data are, are, are critical to, to, to your success as, a, as an enterprise, not just from an IT perspective. And it's where InfoScale really plays sort of the, 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 sort of the critical role in, in achieving that. Uh, any other, what, what sort of outcomes do, you, do your customers find once they've rolled these solutions out? Well, I think operationally that there is a significant reduction in the overhead needed to make some of the more complex and, and, and really challenging operations, you know, cookie cutter. Uh, I had a customer just last week, uh, you know, this might sound like a little bit of, uh, you know, self-promotion, but he said, Storage Foundation is the single greatest software-defined storage technology that's ever been written. And because they are able to achieve a migration on a scale that they never would have been able to achieve without, uh, without a technology like this. Um, and of course, I know there's no way to vet that statement, but you're just going to take, take it on. <laughs> if, if, if the customer is going to has said it, we will take them the, the, on their, the, on their the, word. He, he did, and it was. I, I took pause. I'm like, wow. I was like, uh, can I quote you on that? And he was just like, yes, you may. I'm like, well, there you go. I just quoted. Excellent, it. Joe. What else? Uh, what What other features underneath, or kind of lesser known things from InfoScale? Do you want to make sure customers know about? Oh yeah. I mean, li listen. There there are so many incredible capabilities that are included with InfoScale. I, I would say that. Most important is that um, you know we can do things like transparently tier storage between the on-prem and the public cloud, um, and that can be something as as granular as an as an Oracle database or something as you know general purpose as just a, a you know shared uh, you know NFS file system. Uh, we have intelligent caching mechanisms to accelerate performance of of workloads that again address the issues of performance on-prem as well as the public cloud. Uh, we can help you transition your applications. Uh, we have uh, a migration wizard framework inside of our dashboard, our InfoScale Operations Manager, that allows you to, on you know, on the fly, establish all of the uh, necessary relationships between the different uh, different clusters to be able to move applications from 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 Unix to Linux, move it from physical to virtual, to go from a virtual into hyperconverged. We identify all those pieces and and, and uh, you know, on, I said in an on-demand fashion, build all the components for you. Um, we have, um, uh, you know, a number of different, uh, you know, what's most common to talk about today is ransomware, right? This idea that uh, how do we insulate our, our data from the, from the threats of ransomware? You can do so many different off-host snapshot recovery method, uh, methodologies with InfoScale, right? Creating an air gap between your data and, and secondary data sets that you can recover instantly from, but has that enough gap so that, that something that would corrupt the primary data set would not infiltrate your, your secondary copies. So, I mean, there's just so many cool things that it can do. It's just the use cases are, are, are just pretty uh, you know, innumerable. Yeah, so if, if, last question, Joe, is uh, let's go up level a little bit. Sure. You talk about you know, the application portfolio is really changing for a lot of customers, mm -hmm. the proliferation of databases. Yeah. Uh, we talked about you know, virtual and physical and, yeah. and cloud environments uh, ever changing. So w when customers think about Veritas, how should they uh, w when and how should they be thinking about Veritas? Well, especially from from, the, from an availability standpoint, it's really about uh, abstracting your applications from the underlying infrastructure, providing a resilient and performant storage layer to achieve uh, really the, the goals of your business, not just the goals of your IT, because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that there is a direct line of sight between what you're trying to do as an enterprise, what you're trying to do as a business, be it a financial service institution, healthcare provider, doesn't matter what the, the industry is, um, and that, that the investment you make in IT can directly contribute to that. And with Veritas, we really help customers to, to make that a reality. Um, and we do it tactically with the idea of protecting your applications and ensuring that you have resilient services. And we do it strategically by giving a platform to be able to host any number of different applications across all different operating systems and, and technologies. Great. Jody Angelo, thank you so much for all the updates. Really Stuart, appreciate it. My you pleasure. Coming. All right. 
Be sure to check out thecube.net for all of the interviews we have. Go hit the search. You can find past interviews we've done with Veritas, as well as all the shows that we'll be at at 2020 and beyond. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.